My name is Jordan Leroy Hansen, also known as Ledev, or Ledev, or, you know, just uh, that nickname. And I'm here to actually provide an interesting deck tech of design around a card. Now this one I decided to design around one of the legendary creatures that came from Guilds of Ravnica, Lazal the Multiparius. Now, it's a very cheap creature that's Cerberus 1, but it has a really fun ability that you can spend X mana to become a copy of a target creature card in your graveyard with a converted mana cost X, except its name is Lazal the Multiparius, it's a legendary, yada yada yada, etc, etc. In other words, it's a shapeshifter that changes into creatures in your graveyard as long as you spend the mana. So I kind of brewed around that as so you take a look at the early drops. I put Citrus Supplier in there to try to get cards into the graveyard that we can copy with Lazav. I put Duress in there. And this is kind of one of those when you go one and one when you're ranking in Arena. Mostly this would be a good sideboard card, but I'm starting to realize it's more of a good main board card, at least if we're talking about an Arena meta in general. Especially, there are the times where this is a dead card when you have somebody that has a handful of creatures. But for the most part, it's a good tech card. Next is Deadweight, which is good against early game aggro. And then we go to Walk the Plank, use this removal, Fought Erasure to try to eliminate their hand. Blood Operative, which is a card I'm becoming to respect a lot more in this meta. Especially the fact that it has the lifelink and the exile target card graveyard hate, especially with the jumpstart spell shenanigans. Now, one of the things that people are wondering with Stitch's supplier is like, well, what happened if you accidentally mill Lazav? Well, we actually put two of Rona in here to actually deal with that. If Lazav's in the graveyard, usually a good turn five play is to play Rona and then play Lazav again, which is actually really cool since when Rona, when it enters the battlefield, you exile target historic cards in the graveyard and you may cast non-land cards exiled with Rona, which in this case, since Lazav is historic, since it's legendary, it works. Then we have FIFA Sanity, which Mostly it can die to shock or any early game removal, but for the most part, we have answers to try to remove the removal out of the opponent's hand. And if it sticks, it's actually a pretty good card if it sticks. Like, the amount of games that I won thanks to this card is kinda silly. Plus, if it's in the graveyard, we can just essentially attack with a Zav, and if it doesn't get blocked, we can change it into FIFA Sanity if it's in the graveyard to still get the same effect. Disinformation Campaign is also a really good card for the deck. It's when it enters the battlefield, you may draw a card, each opponent discards card. Whenever you Servier, it returns it back to its hand. We have moments of Serviering, as you can tell with some of the few cards that are in the deck. But mostly I just like this because it kind of helps us get out an advantage. Now, there are the times where you go against like a mono green deck that runs the that bear that pretty much when it gets discarded, it can actually be seen in play. So when that happens, it kind of stinks, but still, for a majority of matchups, this card is actually surprisingly good with the card advantage that you get from it. Cautious Taker is in here as a 2 of because it's just really good to be able to take opponent's stuff and just be able to play it late later in the game and such, or even just take a very valuable essential card that could help them be aggressive during the game. Another card that I'm starting to respect more, even though I'll tell you I'm still salty about playing it in Limited, but I'm actually respecting it more in Constructed, Nightmare Predator, 2 blue, 2 black, flying, death touch, head screw. Can't be targeted by removal spells and such, which I respect it now a lot more since it actually helps a way to protect Lazav late game if you cast him. Because then when you cast Lazav, all you have to do is change him into a Night Veil Predator and hopefully it protects it from removal. Price of Fame is in here as a 2 of because it's just a really, really good removal spell. I mean, heck, if you can carry out the kill Amar pretty early game, it's pretty good. Ritual Suit is also really good, pretty much board wipe against early game aggro. I would probably put this in as a 2 of, but it's a 1 of at the moment since, well, I didn't pull the rare wild card needed to create a second one of these. Doom Whisperer, pretty much it's self explanatory. It's a really overpowered card of the set. The Serviel trick is nice, but it's also just a 5 mana sit sits flying trample, which being able to transform Lazav into that is. Then we put the Immortal Sun in here, which is a card that I'm starting to respect a lot more for Standard, which is a weird thing to say. It's a card that, especially with a lot of people that are playing Planeswalkers or Planeswalker white cards like Nicol Bolas, Vivian Reed, Viceroy, etc., etc., this card I actually respect a lot more in my non Planeswalker centric decks since the card advantage is nice, the creature's getting buff is nice. 
and the factor that, oh, players can't activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities, which pretty much tells control decks that play Teferi that have fun with a Teferi that can't activate its abilities. That's all I'll say about that. Anyway, that is the deck. Let's just have some fun and do some silly shenanigans with Lazav the Multi-Furious. Okay, so we got a good hand here. This is actually perfect. We don't have a Lazar, but we have a Duress, we have a Deadweight, we have two Fief of Sanities that if we can remove out the essential removal from the opponent's hand, it's nice. So we're gonna Duress them. We'll see what they're playing. Oh, Black Green. Ooh, well, we'll take out one Vraska because that's annoying. Well, they're playing our elves, which makes sense. Okay, we'll play an island. We will dead weight on that. Bye bye. Okay, so they're losing their black, which is good for us. So we can play our Thief of Sanity and hopefully steal some Kagari shenanigans. Sheesh, they are not doing good with that. We'll pay the two life in this case, just in case if we get a very valuable drop that we don't mind getting. Eh, it's just land. Eh, we'll just get a tap land out. And we'll play another Thief of Sanity. And a Stitch Supplier. Let's see, so Hostage Taker and a Blood Offer are in the graveyard. Okay, Branch Walker is coming out to play. They get the swamp they need, which is not good for us since that means Frasca can come out, which is problematic. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is a little annoying. Okay, hmm. Let's see. It's zonies in the. Wow, he nailed both his zonies. Okay, first things first, I'm going to hit him twice and see what cards we can get from it. Branch Walker is nice. Poison Tip Archer is really nice in this matchup. And, matter of fact, we're gonna play it. Because even if he, she, he, or, you know what, I need to use proper pronouns. If they, the player, actually plays Vraska and they try to destroy one of my lesser cost creatures, probably the Thief of Sanity is probably what they're going to target, then they have to lose a life and such thanks to Poison Tip Archer. Which is a card you probably, if you're playing Gagari, you probably should keep your eye out on because it's a lot more playable than people give credit for. Okay, Journey of Eternity is actually a nice card. It does make the factor that us wanting to kill this a little bit less popular option okay let's think here so they they'll get a land and they get a land they'll have access to golip and such i think we're going to just have to accept the fact that this is going to be a constant free blocker unless we well i think i'm going to hit with these again and hopefully get a basket's contempt out of him no but it's zoning is interesting but i think the rest is the pick here Mortal Hulk is funny. Eh, I guess a Shaman is not bad, though. Okay, so first things first. We'll take out the last Vrask. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah, we gotta take out the seven strands. Vrasco is the tempting choice, but... Well, let's not kid ourselves. Actually, wait a minute. 
Hey, not a second. I got it. I had the ants all along. <laughs> Hostage taker. Because what happens is you take it, it doesn't kill it, and it removes the enchantment, I believe. Woo! <laughs> I should have realized that answer, but yeah, that was actually a good first match. Against Gagari Midrange. Hmm. Maybe this deck was a lot better than I gave it credit for. Okay, we'll play one or two more rounds of that, because that's actually pretty fun. Okay, so... I think we keep this. Four land hands are not great, but we have a fodder racer. We have that. We can try to easily hate out the opponent's hand. Ugly. That might have been a mistake now, because that's red. Could be mono red. Could be. Is it? It could even be Rakdos. I've been seeing actually some. Eh, looks like is it. So. Let's see if he has the turn one spell pierce. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so it's a Drake deck. We're definitely going to keep Night Veil Predator on. Keep the Sanity. We'll still have to deal with Drake. Hmm. We know that they have one Shiv and Fire in hand. We've got to keep that in mind. I think we let him discard, and then we hope that they get greedy and maybe just put a spell in the graveyard. I highly doubt it, but eh, it's a fop. They might just put a land. Yeah, they're going to put a land. Whew. Is it Drake decks? Are decks that usually after playtesting this deck a little bit before the video, I do just fine with... Ooh! <laughs> it's the Claws Duplicate deck. Nice. Mad props it is, dude, because mad props. Okay. Hmm. Well. We're just going to have to say bye-bye to one of the drinks. There could have been an argument, though, that I could have priced a fame it so I could have brought this back into the hand. There is an argument for that. There is an argument. And now he's in an interesting choice, because what he could do is quad duplicate again, but that's a little bit tricky, since the problem is when you quad duplicate again, well, the spell doesn't get any matter on that. In fact, I am more concerned about this than I am concerned about getting that one point of damage, so. Let's see if he has a counter spell. Okay, Servier. Dead weight. I would like a fuck creature on top. Then that comes back to our hand. Which is nice. Because it's an interesting contradiction with this, with Quas Duplicate and this. So on one hand, you can make the copy, but then these become zero fours again, because the thing is, drakes are equal to cards in your... Oh, Good card for this deck. What was the saying? But yeah, if he did do this, then they're just going to be two zero four drakes, unless he discards a spell. Which it looks like he's discarding this, making him... Because he probably either has A, better removal, or B... B thinks that this is not a... Well, you know. Hmm. I think the play here is first fodder racer. Let's see what he has in his hand. Oh. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we've got to keep in mind that Trancy Melody is a card. Your... I do think this is the pick, because we do have that.
we destroy the last Drake. Now, dead weight's kind of a dead card, ironically enough. And then we see if they have a land. If they have, then they can play Thousand Year Old Storm. No, they don't. They actually have Salvager. Okay, interesting card to play. Coincidentally good for him at this moment. Hmm. Okay, so we gotta do some math here. We don't want to play Thief of Sanity at the moment because he can... Yeah, he has enough mana to take it. We gotta keep that in mind. One, two. He doesn't have enough mana, though, to take... Get a card. I think I would rather just draw into an answer. Let him discard a card of his choice. Yes. So, that actually is perfect. That's what we wanted him to quote-unquote discard, because then we can play FIFA Sanity in theory relatively safe. And even this Stitch Supplier. So who, watch, I could be eating my words and he top decks it. Another copy of Interesting Melody. Okay, so he sips. Makes sense. I don't think there's a one-cost flyer in this meta, which is good for us. We'll take the two. We'll play that. We will hit in. And see what we get here. I mean, this is good as a blocker. But opt also is not bad for our archetype as well. I think I'd rather do that. That way we can try to scry for a good card. Eh, we'll put that on the bottom. Stillborn land. Eh. Then we'll play the Doom Risker. Okay, so now he has enough mana for... Uh, for Thousand Year Storm, which could be scary. Okay, I'm gonna pay two life. I am grateful I did that now. That way we can do that. We'll do it one more time to try to get an answer. Hmm. Let's view the battlefield real quick, view the graveyard. I mean, we could Lazav. Yeah, I think Lazav is the pick here. Besides, that's kind of what this deck was brewed around, so. We play Lazab the Multivarious. We know that's on top. But. We play that. We offer the trade. He doesn't bite. So. We make Lazab become a copy of Doom Whisper. <laughs> Which is still pretty silly. Also, I do have to thank uh, Noah for giving me a foil of this for your trade, so the foiling on that is actually pretty gorgeous. He actually got it from a GP by playing, if I recall the story correct, he was playing a two headed giant with. Oh, I'm forgetting the Mademoiselle's name. Oh, what was her name? Uh, it's the dad of an eight-year-old professional player. I'm forgetting her name worth my life. But nevertheless, he played with his dad in a two-headed giant, kind of like sealed format. And he actually pulled this and Lazav, which is kind of hilarious. 
Okay, we are still not out of this because he could chain a lot of spells, especially with Gutter Snipe on the field, is concerning. He might also quasi duplicate the Drake, which is probably a good idea. He has choices. He might be scared of attacking in at the. He quasi duplicates the Gutter Snipe. I mean, I see the logic there, don't get me wrong, because. Okay. This is interesting. He might try to attack in, he might not. Hmm. The good news is we technically have lethal on him. Sort of. I mean, the problem is he is in a bit of a tight spot here because I can attack with both my Lazav and Doom Whisper and Fever Sanity. And for him to survive, he has to block one of the Doom Whispers. So. We'll do just that. So yeah, he obviously plots against Lazav. Is there any of these that are nice to copy? Nah. We'll let the damage and let Lazav. And we hope to get like a shock or lightning strike or... I mean... Well... Yeah, I still like Op in this circumstances. Because then we can draw into a creature that we can use to block, because... Like another Lazar. Okay. Nice. That's actually perfect. So we play Lazar. We want to put the land in the graveyard in this case. Hmm. And now, honestly, it's tempting to put it, make it into another Doom Whisper, but I think the play here is to use Disinformation Campaign to hate out his hand. Uh, okay. Now we are in trouble. That was a good spell, Pierce. I think we're still dead now, pretty much. Because we can only block that. And honestly, he has lethal a lot of ways here. Because, oh, that was a close game. That's actually a really good game. But yeah. Wow, that was a close game. Okay. I... Uh, yeah, I think that's enough for tonight. I want to keep this video short. That way I can do other obligations I can for the night. Nevertheless, let me show you the deck one more time. Is Lazav Multifarious pretty much Demio Shenanigans the deck? I hope you all enjoyed it. You all have a lovely night now. This is Lev Dev, signing out.